Hi, where are you from? In suburban Chicago. What's your name? Be ever impressive. But never duplicate. 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 Hey everybody, what's going on? I'm Eric C. Welcome to the Art of Noise. And I'm back at it with the Epiphone Les Paul Special 2. Yeah, I ended up going over it with the electric palm hand planter. Gotta make sure I say it right. And it worked out pretty good. I ended up taking a little bit less than an eighth off of it and a little bit more than a sixteenth off the top of the body. The only problem was is it left some lines from material that wasn't cut. Now when I'm when you're doing this I kind of set it to where it was barely skimming the top of it, barely at all. And so I had to make quite a few passes, but I try not to overlap onto those passes when I was doing it because it would leave a really big lining and make it look like steps. So right now I end up sanding it down and now I'm feeling for any like steps or high spots or low spots or anything else. And it feels pretty good. It seems like uh, that planer worked out really nice and you can kind of see it. This thing is like five pieces of wood that they made it out of. Alright, so as you can see I got the neck back on the guitar. I got the bridge pickup on here and now I'm using the Stumac bridge finder. And I've got it set on the 12th fret and I'm going to flip it around right now. It's already set up at the nut. Now I've got it at the 12th fret again, flipped it around, and there's pins on the front of it that are going to let me know, or at the end, exactly where the saddles are going to be uh, on the bridge. So I'm going to mark it, just give myself kind of a reference guide of where they're going to end up at. And I'm going to take the bridge and put it on top of there and kind of eyeball it to line up uh, over the saddles over those marks. So I'm using some fishing line here and I'm going to mimic strings going across so I can get the uh, bridge basically centered, the strings centered with the pole pieces that are on the pickups. This way it's not going to be a guess, guessing work of left and right of how I'm going to have to put this. The bridge, uh, the whole bridge itself moves forward and backwards when it's around your uh, mounts and then the saddles also move individually themselves as well so I can get this thing intonated uh, hopefully on the money once I get this thing done. So right now I'm kind of like eyeballing where those marks are and then moving the bridge uh, to where the saddles are over those marks and on the high and the low E and then the strings are basically where they're supposed to be um, over the pole pieces and now I'm checking with the bridge locator again uh, if those pins are right where they're supposed to be with the saddle themselves and right now I've got it pretty much right where it's supposed to be so I'm going to go ahead and mark the hole that, I, I, that is uh, the holes for the mounts for the bridge are roughly the same size as the screwdriver that I'm using to mark in the wood uh, the location of where they're going to be. So I want to make sure that, you know, measure twice, cut once thing, and make sure everything is lined up properly to where uh, I'm not going to have any problems when I go ahead and drill. Mark this hole, and I should be good to go. Everything should be fine now. So right here are some photos with the Stumac bridge locator, uh, exactly where those pins are falling. You want to make sure that your bridge uh, saddles are set center before doing this. This way you have room for play forward and backwards. Alright, so right now I am measuring the mounts, the sleeve mounts for the bridge, and I'm using a step drill to drill the holes into the body. And the reason being is I want to gradually get to the size that I need rather than using the drill bit that I'm, it's supposed to be used. Uh, and have it travel on me even though I am using something that mimics a drill press there could be a problem or an issue with the drill traveling a little bit so I don't want that to happen and as you can see that the new mounts are not going to be anywhere near where the old mounts were so I've already got part of it drilled in uh, now I'm going with a larger uh, step drill and I'm going to open it up closer to the right size drill bit that I need in order to go ahead and put the sleeves in, well, not just yet, but I will be putting the sleeves in after the veneering is done. I have a tool that's for the Dremel. It's a bit 
that has a rounded end on it. So if I stick it inside or drill a small hole where those mounts are, uh, all I gotta do is put that bit inside there and the bit will ride the inside wall of the hole and cut the dimension that I need for that hole for that mount. So I'm going, right now I'm using the right size drill bit and making the holes uh, for those mounts, the sleeves for the bridge. Now what I measure is the, not the neural part of the sleeve, the part that is uh, flat. So I go ahead and mock it up a little bit just to see where it's going to be and it's basically right where I want it to be. So now I'm going to go ahead and start drilling the holes for the controls on the back of this thing. And again, I am going to eliminate the three-way switch on this. Uh, I'm going to put two volumes and one tone. The tone is going to be a uh, dual tone, so there will be different caps on there. You can have it more aggressive or more laid back as far as your tone goes. Uh, well, more darker, I could say. Uh, and then I'm going to have the volumes, basically, um, you want to shut off a pickup, well, just turn the volume completely off. Now, the volume is going to be a push-pull as well. Now, I haven't decided yet if I'm going to turn it into uh, splitting these coils or if I'm going to turn the push-pull into an on-off. I was thinking about doing an on-off with it. So I'm not using the original holes that were drilled out on this. As you can see, they're more in a straight line. All right, so I have this body pretty much exactly where I want it as far as the feel goes, as far as uh, skimming the top, ready for veneer, basically. There's some little tiny things I have to do with it yet, like clean up the areas inside the control cavities, smooth them out a little bit, especially along the side walls. There's a little bit of a burr over here that I gotta remove, some wood. I also have to drill the new hole for the ground. Um, yeah, I mean, it's pretty much uh, exactly how I want it. There should be no issues as far as adding any type of a shim to the neck. Removing the material that I ended up removing on the top of the body compensates for the new veneer, which is thicker than the old veneer that was on here, um, and the finish that I'm going to put on this thing, which is kind of my signature epoxy resin, I guess. Everything looks good. The last thing I need to do with this before I start doing the veneering, like I said, I just you know even out and clean up a little bit of these cutouts. These cutouts are like perfect. I don't have to really do anything as far as recutting them out. In fact, I may be able to get away with after doing the veneering, not even having any pickup rings on here at all. I want to see how that works, uh, if it's going to look all right because. I've noticed with some of the other guitars that I didn't put any pickup rings on that the pickups stick up quite a bit and I don't like the way that looks so it's still iffy on the pickup rings or not. Now the one thing that I have to do before I veneer this is either take 80 grit or 50 grit sandpaper and kind of sand it either in a crisscross motion to kind of uh, give the glue, the veneer glue, something to bite into when I put it on, put it on, uh, put the top on here and then stick it inside the vacuum bag and let it sit for you know, overnight or whatever. The edges came out really nice. I'm not worried, worried or concerned about anything with this thing. It seems like everything that I had planned is kind of falling into place. The next part of it is gonna be the hard part with the veneering because I'm not gonna just lay a sheet on here and call it good. Um, I've got an idea, I've seen it done and I've seen a actual guitar of the plan that I had, or I've done idea that I have and uh, this is something I've never done before so I'm going to try something new and then the neck itself the headstock is going to match that as well so what I need to do is there's a plastic template or something on top of here and I can kind of see it and when I ended up drilling the holes for the uh, to accept the new uh, tuners that I'm going to put on here so it's go to tuners go to a bridge and I have to strip this thing completely down so that also I'm going to be removing the Epiphone logo on here and I've got a idea of a new Epiphone logo that's going to go on here. It's still going to say Epiphone. You know, I'm not going to change it to, to Eric C with my logo. This is not a Eric C uh, guitar that has been built from a kit or you know from scratch. This is still an Epiphone Les Paul Special. But this is going to be a custom Epiphone Les Paul Special too. 
So the Les Paul's going away, the Epiphone's going away. It's got a new logo hopefully coming. Um, I'm still waiting to hear from Jeff to see what he came up with as far as what I had asked about uh, you know, something different than the normal logo. Um, I gotta think of something to put inside of here. Maybe, maybe not. It all depends. Uh, when I put the veneer on the top of this headstock, um, I kind of don't want to hide the veneer at all. I kind of want that to be shown. I got to do some finishing work on the back of the headstock. The back of the headstock is pretty good, but I ended up uh, filling in all the holes with wood. And now I got to kind of sand them down a little bit. There's a little bit of a nub there and probably respray the back of the headstock only. If I do this the way that I think I'm going to end up doing it, um, you shouldn't even tell that this headstock was even refinished and still keep the serial number. Now the bad thing about this is the serial number is, is not going to match uh, what this was because this is going to be a total custom built, well, custom remodel, let's say. And all the parts that are on here, um, like I said, they're not anything that Epiphone put on this guitar. It's going to be all completely different. I kind of like the idea with the wraparound tailpiece on this thing because it opens up more of the body to show off the veneer that's going on here. All right, you guys. I hope you guys have a great week. Uh, take it easy. Have a good one. And, uh, you know, if you end up trying to do something like this, uh, make sure you wear some type of a eye protection, ear protection, or whatever, and have a shop vac uh, ready to clean up the mess that you're going to end up making. And like I said, that uh, planer really made a mess inside here. And uh, I still have to clean the floor up a little bit because it's uh, yeah, got wood shavings and shit all over the place. Not too bad, but bad enough. The vacuum ended up working pretty good as far as attaching it to the planer, but there was still some uh, material that, you know, it didn't didn't back pick up, I guess. I don't know. But anyways, he's all good. Catch you guys later. Have a good one.